I'm Denver 7 Stephanie Butzer, and we're up outside of Montezuma near the Pennsylvania mine. While up in this area recently, I came across signage about a mine rehabilitation project, and it got me thinking about Colorado's abandoned mines. Turns out there's more than 23,000 of them across the state. And while they're an important part of our state's history, they also pose safety problems. We talked with the experts who were spearheading the solutions and working towards preserving these historic relics. Scattered throughout Colorado's high country are remnants of our state's beginnings. The history of the mining industry here dates back to the gold rush of the 1850s, before Colorado even joined the Union. And part of that statehood in 1876 is in large part due to the, the mineral wealth of the state. The last half of the 19th century was Colorado's mining heyday. Then, as years passed, thousands of these spots were left behind. There was not the same kind of concern about safety that we have today back then, uh, so they just walked away from them, which is why you can drive around up in the mountains of Colorado and find so many random mining structures there. Those structures are now the focus of Colorado's Department of Mining, Reclamation, and Safety, and particularly its active mine reclamation program. I think for myself and a lot of my staff, I think we like solving problems. That's Jeff Graves, the program's director. We're also doing projects that help to clean up our environment while also protecting Colorado's heritage. Protecting the state's heritage, but also its people. For some, judgment has succumbed to curiosity, and mines are treated more like caves than the traps that they can be. We're protecting the public from hazards that they may or may not be aware of. Among those hazards, structures that are on the verge of collapse or even unstable explosives. Emergency crews across the state have spent years performing rescues and even recoveries in Colorado's mines. It's why part of the mine reclamation program's mission is the Stay Out, Stay Alive campaign. We strongly encourage the public to stay out of these sites, which is really what drives our safeguarding is trying to address those in advance of the public needing to either be rescued or potentially to have some kind of a fatality associated with those sites. And there have been some in Colorado. Gray's team spreads its project managers and both the state and federal funding across Colorado. They address sites, groups at a time, that pose the biggest threat. And so we'll plan projects geographically in those different areas and prioritize things that we know are easily accessible, that based on our observations create a significant safety hazard. So far, the program estimates it has closed 13,000 mining sites, but there's plenty more work to do. Graves says there could be as many as hundreds of thousands of mines left from centuries past, each presenting a unique challenge. So it's a great opportunity to truly really dig in and solve what hasn't been solved for 100 years. If you want to see some of Colorado's abandoned mines, some are on private property, but others are publicly accessible. Just remember to keep a safe distance. And for more on mine safety and preservation, go to denver7.com slash abandonedmines. Reporting for Denver 7, I'm Stephanie Butzer.